Hey guys! Da, 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 da. I am so happy to be here. I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds um, just to see if anyone is here watching me live. And I'm gonna try and see. Every time I do a live, I can never check the comments that come through. Um, for some reason, like everything just goes haywire completely. So if anyone's here now, can you give me some thumbs up? Let me know that the sound's okay. You guys can hear me. I'm not just a pixelated blur. Just not making any sound. So if someone's here now, throw me some thumbs up so I know that you can see me so I can continue with day two of this challenge. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. So before I even get started with any form of introduction, I want to start by saying, Amy, you are amazing. Oh, thumbs up to my accent. Yay. <laughs> Amy, I want to say a huge thank you for letting me be a part of, of your group and this challenge. This is truly a great honour as well. And you have really made me up-level my minimalism game. Let me just tell you that. So for you guys that are watching right now, hello and welcome to day two of the Making a Minimalist Challenge. I am Danny De Silves, the founder of leafyco.co.uk, the place where zero waste beginners find what works for them to help them reduce their household waste. So day two is all about decluttering and downsizing, and I'm here to help you understand the best ways of being very sustainable about getting rid of stuff, because it happens to everyone. Hey Monica, how you doing? Okay. So let me explain what zero wasting is because to some people this is completely new and it probably sounds bizarre and a lot of people think that I'm part of the rubbish removal team when I say that I work with people and they're trash. So what I do is I help people find a way to reduce the amount of trash that they make. So let's have a really cool analogy for a second. Everything that we place inside our kitchen bin and then it goes into our trash can outside is picked up by a removal lorry and shipped off to a landfill site and kind of left to rot over hundreds and hundreds of years, okay? It's a crazy concept. We completely forget that when we throw away trash, it doesn't really go away. We're just moving it elsewhere. So it's so important that we understand the kind of consequences and the bad things that are happening. We don't like to admit it, but you know, let's be real for a couple of seconds. So day one was all about identifying your why, you know, the reasons why you want to become a minimalist. It can be to reduce your stress, to reduce your debt, to find happiness in doing things that you want to do. We have to understand that when we start getting rid of stuff, because there's going to be tons of clutter guys like right now you have entered the purge system okay you've entered the purging ways of becoming motivated to make your life better and the purge feels great so thumbs up for everyone that's already starting to think about things that they're already getting rid of like give me some thumbs up let me know that you're taking action in this challenge so amy knows that you're taking part so I want to give you some really cool ideas to feel guilt-free about getting rid of stuff because it happens, okay? Now, this is my story very, very quickly. I've lived as a zero waster since 2015. Now, since 2015, I've thrown away, I think, three bags of, of rubbish to landfill. So it's about a bag a year, roughly. So just a general-sized trash can bag that I've sent to landfill. Um, so I actively live a life where I don't throw away things. So I avoid buying things in plastic packaging. I avoid single use items. And the reason for that is because plastic isn't recycled. It's downgraded, left to landfill, left for years. It's gonna outlive my great, great gang, grandkids and that kind of terrifies me, okay? And if trash is incarcerated and burnt, it's bad for the environment because of the carbon. Like, I'm not gonna give you any science, but we know the facts that you know, this is, this is bad news. Okay, so a quick summary of what I want to talk about today is the methods that I use so that I can get rid of things without any, without any guilt, knowing that I've kind of damaged the environment a little bit. Um, the how, I actually have sent just one bag of landfill, one bag of rubbish to landfill, sorry, in the past year, and also a sneak peek into some items that I have here, which I know you guys are going to love, and I know you guys are going to be inspired to even get your own versions of these items as you start your minimalistic journey. Okay, so how it worked for me was I always considered myself as environmentalist. I was actually starting my journey of minimalism and I wanted to downcycle things and I was becoming more aware with my health 
um, I hit rock bottom, okay? I was at a point in my life where I was agoraphobic, I was uh, severely anxious and depressed, and I just thought, I'm done with it. I want to make my life simple. So I started the minimalism journey. And during that time, I figured um, that I was making lots of waste. And I thought, I'm gonna look at my waste concept as well and see what I'm throwing out. So I changed practices. Um, and I bought things in bulk um, and some single use items were swapped for reusables. And I'll tell you about them in a couple of moments time. Okay, so my story is helping you guys get rid of what we're gonna get rid of as a sustainable method. So a couple of tips for you are, if you are getting rid of, let's say for example, anyone that's worked on their bathroom today uh, since starting their journey, you are going to come across lots of shampoo bottles, conditioner bottles that will have tiny, tiny bits in, which we're keeping anyway. We're just thinking, well, I'll just keep it because I will reuse it. But the fact is, if you haven't reused something in the past couple of months, you probably aren't going to use it again. Okay. So the method is find in a way to get rid of that item sustainably. So here's some tips for you. The way that I downcluttered my place was I sold a lot of items on eBay. Now it's something that we do overlook, okay? We kind of think, okay, this thing here in my drawer, I don't get any happiness from it, um, I wouldn't get rid of it. And then we kind of become kind of mind blank towards that item and we think, okay, if it's rubbish to me and pointless, it's gonna be pointless to somebody else. But this is the really cool trick and you can make a lot of money from this as well, is if you don't, if you sell your things, say on eBay, in Facebook groups, on Etsy, at vintage marketplaces, you will find that other people love your trash. Now we know the story that another man's trash is another man's treasure and it's exactly what take place inside your minimalistic journey, I promise you. So some tips for you are to donate what you already have. If you wanna make a couple of dollars, you know, then by all means sell your stuff on eBay. You can sell so many things that you probably never even realized. So I would say give it a chance, slam it up on eBay, make a bit of money, because then you're removing that from going to the landfill site. You're kind of donating it and giving it a second life to somebody else. Now this is my second tip, which is probably my most favorite. It's less stressful. You haven't got to wait weeks until eBay sales start happening. You can literally put everything inside a box, and get rid of it by the end of the day. And that is by taking advantage of people that will need things, okay? And I say take advantage of that in a nice way. Um, but the most easiest way is by on your smartphone right now, on Facebook, there will be free cycle towns, free cycle groups, sorry, in your local town, which would be people that have, don't have the money, they don't have the resources, and they're in desperate of need of things. And you can give people things for free. Now, here's a couple of examples. When I moved out of my three bedroom house to my one bedroom apartment, as you can imagine, I had so much clutter that I got rid of. And I tried throwing everything up on eBay I thought, you know, I might as well try and pay for my next month's rent from my eBay sales. But it was stressful. My, uh, my lease date came up quicker than expected and I had my whole bedroom, my spare bedroom was full of boxes of clothes and items and figurines and pots and pans and things that I didn't need after starting my minimalistic journey. And I thought, okay, so I either have the choice of waiting for my eBay sales to happen and shipping all this stuff to my new apartment and probably cramming everything up from the floors to the ceilings of other stuff that I don't need. And if I know I'll donate it for free. And I got rid of everything within two days, literally two days. I got rid of duvets, ironing boards, um, no word of a lie, I had three duvets from going back between university and my parents' home to my own home, and I don't know where the rest of them came from, but I had three duvets. Like, what girl needs three duvets in their life? No one needs that many amount of duvets. So I donated my duvets to um, dog shelter places, so places that rehome dogs, um, or places that, like kennels, where you'd send your dog or your cat for the weekend whilst you go on holiday. These places are in desperate need of things like old bedding, um, towels, duvets, pillows, you name it. Anything that's comfy and squishy, these animals need. So I donated a lot of my stuff there. And this is something that I know you guys are gonna love, is the things, which I said before, the tiny bits of shampoo that we have left in shampoo bottles. Or, you know, I, this, this is me, I'll be very truthful with you. Underneath my kitchen sink, I used to have a box full of like mold remover, a box full of window cleaner, a box full of everything. It was just kind of a complete mess under my kitchen sink. And every time I was buying something, 
Um, I forgot what I had in the, in the cupboards at home. I'd go out to the shopping center and I'd buy more. And in the end, I had like 10 to 15,000, well, not 15,000, but you get the point. I had a lot, a lot of stuff that I didn't need. Um, and it turns out that I had like 10 bottles of a window cleaner. Like, that's crazy. So what I did is I donated all of these things. Now, the common concept is, well, I can't recycle a bottle which has like disinfectant in, I'll put it in the landfill um, waste cycle. But before you do that, consider donate it to, say, a woman's refuge, um, a children's hospital, anywhere where someone will need these products. And again, up on your free cycle Facebook groups, people will love them. There's people that have, you know, just like me, I broke up with my partner. Um, I moved all of a sudden so quickly to another place. I had nothing. I literally moved out before I even processed in my head what was going on. So at that point, I needed equipment. Um, so there's times like that where people will be in desperate need of things which you have and rather than send it to landfill See if someone else wants those items for you Okay So another thing that I like to promote as well is upcycling So one common example just so you can really understand is I used to have a bookshelf in my old place It was completely ginormous and it had thousands of books on it from university from my childhood and eventually I sold these books and got rid and donated everything because I was a child when I read half of these books and I'm not going to pick them up in adult life and read them again because they don't serve happiness to me anymore. So, but I was left with the bookshelf and I thought, well, this is like a damn good bookshelf. I don't want to, you know, burn it, get rid of it. Um, but it was a little bit tatty. It wasn't holding itself up very good. And I had this miraculous idea to upcycle it. Um, and what I did is when I moved into this place, I can't show you because of where my camera angle is, but my bookshelf has now been cut up into different types of shelving units and I have hung them up on the walls around my apartment. So now I'm living a minimalistic lifestyle. I like to have a clutter-free home and I like to have lots of space on the floor so I can walk through and feel fancy and just glide across my laminate flooring. Um, so now rather than have things on the floor and on tables, I have things up on the ceiling. So my rooms have more height and I feel like I'm being lifted in my rooms and I can appreciate there's, it's a small apartment, but I'm getting more kind of like bang for my buck in terms of like my room spacing. So I turned my bookshelf into just single shelving units around my apartment. So you can upcycle a lot of the things that you are getting rid of, uh, getting rid of. So Pinterest is your best friend. Okay. You guys will be obsessed with Pinterest as soon as you start understanding that something that you're going to get rid of probably by the end of today um, you could probably upcycle into something really cool so some keywords you want to be searching in Pinterest is upcycling projects DIY projects or for example how to reuse I don't know a baby's crib into something cool and you will always find these amazing ideas that have already been done before that you can replicate and turn into something awesome the next thing I want to say is probably the last thing in terms of um, the guilt-free methods of getting rid of stuff is repairing things, okay? Now, for me, um, because I've been back and forth around the UK to London, to my hometown, loads of different places, a lot of my stuff got broken in transit. So I had lots of broken things. Um, for example, I had um, lots of picture frames that were broken and uh, they would just have tiny little cracks where the corners were. And um, what I did is I just repaired them nice and simply. But this concept applies for clothing and lots of different things. So I started repairing things rather than get rid of them. So I'm still keeping them in my home, upcycling them, giving them kind of a, a fresh lick of paint, making them awesome, and they're still serving me happiness. Okay. And another top one as well is to just ask friends and family if they want anything. Um, for me, recently leaving university, I have loads and loads of plastic folders. And I know I would throw them away normally, but what I've been doing is just donating them to uh, my friends who are currently students and they get purpose out of that. Okay, so by doing all these things, by not sending anything to landfill, what that's caused me is to completely get rid of my kitchen bin. No word of a lie, I don't have a kitchen bin in my home whatsoever. So I don't throw anything to landfill. 
I recycle everything. The small collection of things that I don't throw away, I have in a small box, which I kind of go through every month, every couple of months, and see what I'm making the most of and see how I can kind of find an opposite way of, uh, of buying that thing or bringing that thing into my home. So the last thing I wanna talk about before I, I go off and you guys continue with your minimalistic journey is the awesome reusable things that I use pretty much daily. Um, which means I have more room on my home, I'm reducing my debt, loads of awesome stuff. Okay, so my first one is in the kitchen practices. So I have this little thing here, probably looks a bit crazy to you guys, you know, it's not a fancy hairbrush, it's not a ginormous toothbrush, this is a dish washing brush, crazy, I know. I was obsessed, and I know guys, you're gonna love this, the feeling when you have a new dish sponge feels incredible, okay? We all know that is when you take out a new dish sponge and you know like cleaning the plate, it feels ridiculously awesome to have a brand new sponge. But now I've decluttered my kitchen, I have no reusable sponges, um, no single use sponges, sorry, I replaced it for one of these brushes. Um, so I do my dishes with this, it's perfect for cutlery, for cups, things like that. And this, having this under my kitchen sink has saved me from buying probably a packet of sponges every single month. And you've got to think that the less items you have in your kitchen, the more space you have, the less options you have to choose from, the happier, you know, the, the decreasing amount of your stress levels are going to be, and also your budget as well. Which brings me to my most favorite thing, which is tea. You've probably guessed from my accent, I do love tea, I am an avid tea drinker. If there was an Olympic option to drink tea, I would so be in that drinking tea, competing for the first place. So I buy lots of loose tea because tea bags, um, they can't be um, composted because they have plastic in. So I buy lots of tea and I put my tea inside a little tiny thing like this. Um, and it just makes me feel a bit fancy as well. Um, but my most, well, my second favorite thing is, I'm gonna show you, okay, so don't freak out. I know a lot of people do, but it's completely normal. So I'll give you a bit of an introduction first. Um, if this is you, then by all means, throw me some love hearts and let me know. Inside my old place, I used to have a, a bathroom cabinet drawer dedicated to menstrual products. Okay, I used to have a, a, a mass amount of, you know, tampons and um, single use sanitary towels to the point where I would forget how much I had and just continuously buy new boxes every single month where I had a whole drawer in my bathroom cabinet and my top drawer where my, say, my pants and my socks and my bras were, I had loads of menstrual items in there as well. Um, so a quick summary of that, it was I was spending about £10 a month on these types of products. But what I did is to reduce the clutter and to give myself one option, which is a bit beneficial for my health as well, is grab myself a menstrual cup, okay? So I won't show it off too much because it might gross some of you guys out. Ooh, okay, so this little bad boy just here, um, I think I spent £12, which probably works out about $15, $16 for anyone that's in the US. Um, and I've had this menstrual cup for two years, so I've saved every single month about £10 worth of uh, menstrual products. So now I've managed to um, use up all the menstrual products I had in my bathroom cabinet and in my bedroom, and instead replace it. So I have more space, you know, to um, just kind of organize um, my stuff and make it look better, you know, pull open my drawers and know that the small limitations of socks and things that I have, I feel happy about and I can see everything that I own. So this has saved me money, um, my health benefits have improved um, and also I have less clutter. Another common thing as well for you guys is, da, 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 is an alternative to shampoo. So inside here is a shampoo bar, okay? So instead of having the mass amount of shampoo bottles that all of us guys have, you know, let's admit it, it happens. We have thousands of them. You know, we go to hotels and we steal the little sample bottles of shampoo. I'll hold my hands up and say I've done that, okay? So we take things thinking that they'll be beneficial for us, but in the long term, we won't use them anyway. So I've managed to get rid of all of my shampoo by donating it to a, rim a woman's refuge, replacing it with a shampoo bar. Hopefully you guys, that can pick up on the camera. 
But inside here, I just lather it up in my hands. It's shampoo, um, and then I use an apple cider vinegar as a conditioner um, to give me a nice sheen. So this I use as shower gel as well, and I also use it to shave my legs. So I've gone from having a whole cabinet dedicated to shaving foam, shower gels, shampoo, to just this one little bad boy here. So I can go to the Lush store, um, and buy a block like this and this is probably going to last me I would like to say close to over a year possibly I'll keep you guys updated with that and another common pet peeve um, which a lot of us ladies have is hair removal okay so if we think about normal standard razors they have plastic on them which can't be recycled because it's plastic um, so I've picked myself up a um, safety razor it looks pretty pretty scary um, but it's not, it's, it's, it's safe um, and it probably gives me the best shave I've ever had. So this razor here, I'll even show you. Um, so I've picked up the blades, I think I've spent about $12 including the blades and I've got like 100 blades in my pack. So this is what a blade looks like and it's fully stainless steel so it can be thrown into a sharps um, jar and added into my recycling um, bin. Um, obviously, I would label that up and say, you know, there's razor blades in this. But these can be recycled. Um, and that reduces the amount of uh, disposable razors that I bring into my home. And my boyfriend um, has his own as well. So that means rather than having a drawer of shampoo and conditioner and all the other things that we have, I only have two razors in there. Um, and the blades last a long time. So again, it's a guilt-free, sustainable way of not throwing out plastic. And um, another one as well. Oh, actually, I'll show you this one. This is my favorite one. Um, I don't buy bottled water anymore. It's a simple thing that we can swap. You know, going along your minimalistic journey, you will notice you are more in tune with your health. There has been talks about the damage behind drinking out of, um, out of plastic because of the BPA endocrines inside there, which can change your hormones. But that's another story, so don't worry too much about it. But I've swapped all of my single-use water bottles just for something that I take out with me. So this is um, um, it's called Corksicle. I put my water in there, I leave it in my bag, I drink on the go, fill it up at a water fountain, at a restaurant, at a bar, because tap water is free, just ask them to fill it up. And that has stopped me um, buying single-use bottles. For me, living when I was kind of living a luxurious life down in London, I was back and forth everywhere, convenience was the way to go, and I probably bought close to four to five bottles of water every day for a year. And that's a lot of plastic. So I now don't buy anything and I haven't for the past two to three years. Um, so that is what I want to share with you guys. I know that's a lot of information to take through. But a quick summary is if you are going to be purging drastically and getting rid of lots of stuff in your home along this journey, try and think about donating it to someone if you can rather than throw it away even if it's a small bottle of say disinfectant in the kitchen that'll still serve a good purpose to somebody else you just have to think outside the box and remember that someone else's trash can be someone else's treasure which i'll probably overuse that saying from now on so if you want to find out more about how you can start your zero waste journey and get some more insight in the reusable items that i have here i have a facebook group dedicated to just that so it is zero judge, zero fluff, zero waste. And, and I will post a link to it in the comments below. I'll be hanging out all night. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me. You can also find me over on Instagram at the hashtag LeafyCo. And that is me over and done with. So guys, thank you so much for watching and listen to me ramble on about how <laughs> the ways that we can save the environment. You guys are incredibly awesome. And once again, Amy, thank you so much for this opportunity. And I am ready to really up level my minimalism game. So you guys are incredible and I'll speak to you all soon. Bye bye.